Well, thanks, everybody. Um, appreciate the time today. Um, really excited to be spending some time with you guys and in um, and, and going through this, this, this opportunity and presentation with you guys today. So I think that we've got 20 minutes together. And so obviously, as there's questions, um, you know, feel free to stop me. I'm, I'm certainly honored to be pre uh, presenting today and really excited to, um, to do this. So why don't we go ahead and um, get started? And um, I will go ahead and advance my screen. Um, and let's see if I can figure out. One second. Full screen. That's what I want. Okay. So, well, thank you again um, for the time today. And uh, I'm thrilled to be talking to you guys. So really the, the topic I had to talk about today was my own journey, my own experiences from a point of view of um, a technology leader and um, the path that I've taken to get here. So hopefully what we can we can we can talk through today and what I can share with you guys will be helpful um, in terms of um, just some of the things that we've the lessons learned along the way. And I apologize, I can't seem to be <laughs> getting out of the screen mode. So I'm just gonna go ahead and proceed as is. So um, let's see. Uh, it's frozen. Ah. I am frozen. So um, I think it finally unfroze. Let me go to the um, and let's try one more time. Okay. So what I wanted to talk about really was that journey, right? And what led me down the path in terms of being that executive and, and how I got here. You know, oftentimes I'm asked in, in terms of this makes me starting to feel a little bit older in my career, but what was the journey you had to get here and, and what were the key pieces and integral le lessons learned along the way? And so I've, I've done some college, you know, um, um, classes and served as an adjunct professor in the past. But really what I wanted to take you guys through is in terms of my own journey, some of the things and tips and tactics along the way, because it's a it's certainly an, an interesting opportunity and an interesting opportunity for women, and especially when we think about technology and how do you get there. So I, you know, many, many moons ago, I uh, went to a college in Virginia called James Madison, which was fantastic. Um, I had no idea whatsoever what I was going to do post that that time there and remember walking down and probably these things don't even exist anymore, but these job fairs, right, and trying to figure out, well, what am I going to do? I know I needed a job. I knew I wanted to have an opportunity to to make money and, um, and so somehow landed um, right in front of ADP, which is a, a payroll company, which I'm sure a lot of folks are familiar with on the phone. So, um, you know, I got my first shot to become a small business district manager, um, basically covering a territory. At the time, they did territories based on zip code. So think about, you know, I had four zip codes. I focused on accounts that were size one to 50, and a big part of my job was foot canvassing. And that foot canvassing um, was things like going door to door to pizza places and, and asking them if they would be you know, talking to them about payroll and, and seeing if they would bite. So uh, really good foundation level in terms of, of sales. It was a, a great training ground. You know, um, I learned so many different lessons there along the way and, and spent about eight years there, um, you know, going up the ranks from a rep in the small business group to major accounts and then managing and then managing multiple regions. Um, and so it was a really good foundational level um, opportunity for me. Um, I, I was really thankful for my eight years there, but I had a real desire. Um, the tech world was starting to explode and really thought it would be a good opportunity to kind of spread my wings and, and join a startup. And so at the time I had a, an opportunity to join a really small company called Success Factors, which ultimately got acquired by um, SAP. And, you know, um, was a whole new world, right? Everything when you were in a public environment, there's so many things nicely laid out for you. You do X, Y, and Z, you kind of get to your next goal, your next tier, right? In the sales world, it was all about making sure that 
you you overperformed it in your numbers and those were really the paths towards leadership but the place i think it really lacked was giving you those skills that um would really think about a holistic view and where i thought a startup could be so beneficial is being exposed to so many different places but man was i spoiled because by the time i got to success factors it was probably one of those most humbling experiences of my career um going into an environment where a lot of things weren't figured out having to create a lot of your own powerpoints your materials uh cold call um you know configuring demos it was a uh drink by the fire hose environment i loved it but it was hard and it knocked me on my butt you know it was um from having a place of where i thought i had achieved optimal success having all these people report to me all these leaders report to me and then getting to that opportunity of success success factors and and really realizing how much more there was to really learn so that journey took me through rep manager you know was lucky enough to have um a lot of success there and then an rvp stayed there through the point in time of the company going ipo but left before the acquisition of sap as i had another opportunity to go work for a very small company called castlight which was in the benefits transparency space so had joined some of my former colleagues from success factors over at castlight and had opportunities as both an rvp and an avp um managing pretty much the teams that held all the largest accounts within the organization and the firm. Um, within three years, we took the company IPO. Um, it was a really one of those, and again, knock me on my butt experiences. So going from a world of, you know, okay, I got my handle on this talent management piece, but now I have to learn benefits. And there were these brilliant academics and Ivy League folks there and was a super intimidating experience and, and, and having a little bit of a failure to get to the place of where getting back to success, um, again, continues to be the theme that I saw through my, my own career. Um, then having that opportunity finally, which is what I was working towards, was to become a VP, a global VP of sales and marketing and um, had an opportunity to go run a, a, a company with a group of about 250, um, global opportunity, really the whole idea behind that was to get the business acquired it was a services business but my ultimate career goal really for me at the time was to go start a startup and so about four years ago i was lucky enough to be a part of uh starting that dream with um somebody i've worked with for the last 15 years and uh take on a role as the chief revenue officer and so that that uh humbling thing continues to be one of those things you see throughout the career and for those who've been through the journey of um, starting a company with zero employees, zero customers, zero resources, and just a small amount of uh, seed round, it is a it is a bear and it is a climb. So, um, so what is the journey, right? And as I was a young, naive, you know, twenty two year old with a lot less gray hair, you know, I had these huge expectations that you know after a very little amount of success in my first couple of years at ADP that it was going to be a killer ride right and i thought it was going to go like the picture on the left and the reality is i think more often times than not i felt like the picture on the right right so so what are those lessons learned right so as we think about you know what are those things that you know i've learned along the way you know as i get asked a lot in terms of those mentor roles i've held for a number of women um uh, in other organizations and not limited to women, but other other places, there's some key components that I think have been really helpful. And if they're helpful to fuel you or arm you with some of those details and data, um, you know, I, I, I'm hopeful that there's something you'll you'll grab from this that um, will be useful from you for you moving forward. So, the biggest lesson I learned more than, more than once, and I can is that you got to fail forward, right? And you got to fail often. Right, so the reality is everybody experiences setbacks, right? There's places it's not gonna work, right? And you're gonna try to figure out a way to make it work and the way that you thought it was gonna work, it's not, right? So you gotta not necessarily give up and that's why I love the idea and if anybody has seen The Last Dance with Michael Jordan, it's a great documentary, but you really gotta figure out a way that how are you gonna figure out the problem? Okay, the solution you thought would work in theory doesn't. So now you gotta go figure it out. And you can't rely on somebody else to figure it out. You gotta go for it, 
right? And you, you're, you're going to make mistakes. And mistakes are totally okay. Because the reality is until you experience those, you're not going to get to a place of where you're going to get to that success point where, where it takes you to the place of where all those lessons learned along the way helps to create that level of success. And so the second thing for me was is that culture is, is really important, right? And I've, uh, throughout the, the, my 20 plus year career, you know, I've been a part of companies that have had really bad cultures. I won't name them by names. And I've had experiences with cultures that were awesome. And the thing that you got to constantly remember is, you know, regardless of that, you got to show up, right? And so what I mean by that is you show up every day for yourself, right? And for what it is you're trying to achieve. You show up for your teammates and the other colleagues that you have throughout the course of the company. And then you show up for the company, right? Is this a mission? Is this, is this something you're passionate about? Do you see what this can do to change the world, right? And that might sound a little hokey, but that's the reality. You have to believe that. And then when you do get to that place, it's going to be hard, but you got to work together, right? It's the canoe and everybody being in that canoe together and making that commitment to be there matter because others are going to pick you up when you fall and you need to be able to do the same thing for others. So show up. And along that vein, right, probably where I would spend more of my time in terms of this, this lessons learned is this to me is one of the most important things, right? So, you know, how do you get to that trajectory journey? And so there's a lot of things that, you know, you look at in terms of the peeps that you surround yourself with. Um, for me, the way I would bucket it is you obviously have your external network, right? Those include all your people, like your friends, your families, your kids, you know, those are your go-tos. You ultimately, after spending any sort of period of time internally, right, with the people you work with, those become your internal go-tos. But it's usually a trusted circle, right, and folks that you can trust and rely upon. For me, you know, those have been really key in some of the relationships I've met at um, Success Factors, which I would say was probably one of the best cultures I've worked with. A lot of my best friends to this day came from that organization. And, you know, a big thing for me was finding mentors. and um mentors are something that you can't necessarily assign but evolve over time and then for me you know a lot of people have this idea of a work spouse or work, work partner and absolutely that's been core to my uh success and somebody i've been able to lean on along the way but you know going back to that experience at success factors it was a big change for me right it was a big change for me having an admin and having you know all these people and i was like oh i'm so great and having all these opportunities and expense accounts and and then being thrust into this world of wow this is like a paper hanger and and budget opportunity and also kind of a bit of an attitude in terms of an edge i'm like i got this i know it and i was lucky enough to be paired up with uh this new hire buddy who was who was my mentor to this day a, a gentleman named greg nash and he was assigned to me as my new hire buddy. So he called me on my second day and said, hey, I'm your new hire buddy. And then I didn't hear from him for four months. So I always like to joke with him um, about the fact that I was left, left on that island. But the reality is once I got back connected to him, I had already had that fall from grace, so to speak, meaning that it was a lot harder than I thought it would be. And Greg knew that that was going to happen. And so... I spent some time with him and said, look, I, I don't know how I'm not being successful, right? I, I don't know why this isn't working for me and it's really making me mad and frustrated and man, this is so annoying. And he took a look at some of the stuff I was doing. He's like, this sucks. I was like, thank you. Um, but the reality is, and he made me go try again. And I spent a lot of time with him. I learned, he told me things I needed to do, like learn the product. You will become so much more proficient in terms of your ability to execute in the field. Um, learn and understand the why, and why is this important to your buyer? And it changed everything. And so after a pretty rocky start, what wound up happening is then, you know, getting to a place of back to the number one uh, rep at the time, which was a humbling experience in a better way. Um, I'll never forget at that, that company all hands and, and the first person I sought out, 
um, after he called out was him and gave him the biggest hug ever. Um, just because I knew that the life, the lessons he imparted on me, um, I would take and carry forward with me forever and try to make sure to, to do that moving forward for others um, who go through that same struggle. So, you know, one of the things that constantly happens as a woman um, or anybody really is that there's there's idiots everywhere, right? I'm from New Jersey. I'm definitely pretty blunt, but you know, the reality is there have been some men's clubs along the way, right? There's adversity for all sorts of people they face in every type of walk of life. So it's not limited, right? But there was a lot of times that I've been in positions where I was more successful, so could not, the business couldn't afford to promote me, right? Which really sucks. Or I was in positions where there was a lot of misogynistic talk and um, implications as to why maybe somebody, a woman might be successful versus others. You gotta ignore that. And you've gotta be able to say, they don't know what they're doing. That That's coming from a place of where they're insecure and, and it's a topic that's important to talk about, right? Because these things do impact. There is, you know, there are these groups and there's these, you know, I don't know how to play golf. I don't wanna know how to play golf. But what I do wanna do is be the best at what I can do in terms of my job. And the one thing I know I needed to do was not to get impacted or affected by people who really at the end of the day should not have any bearing um, in terms of my own success. Um, the thing for me that was really also really important is this idea of life learn lifelong learning. Um, you know, for me, coming to Socrates again is one of those experiences that knocks my, me on my butt and really has been an opportunity to get involved into all facets of the business. If you had told me as a chief revenue officer, I would have ever been learning how to write product specs or if I had been writing implementation decks or anything of that nature, I would have said, you're crazy. But the reality is it's made me better in so many ways, in a way that I never thought I could appreciate. And so this idea of embracing things that you can always get better, right? You could always get better at a craft. You could get yourself and pursue things that are gonna help you be successful. And being curious is a really good thing. A lot of great, great learnings come from that. And when you experience success, right? This is why for celebrities, and this is not me, so I don't mean it that way, but the idea is, is that there's always going to be naysayers, right? When you succeed, there'll be people saying they were successful because of this. And it's usually a derogatory statement or as a woman, maybe you've experienced, oh, well, you know, she's attractive, she's sleeping with this person or, you know, all sorts of things. And these are crazy things and it's okay to talk about because it doesn't make it fact, right? You know why you're successful and you can't get bogged down by why people will tear you down. And the way that you react to it or the lack of reaction and just prove it is really what starts to matter. You don't, so haters are always going to hate. It's the way that you're going to deal with that that's going to make it a make or break for you as a as a as a leader as you grow your career. And if my team was on the phone today, they might be able to um, repeat this verbatim, which is to be comfortable with the uncomfortable. The reason I say that, and I love that idea, is that anytime you're too comfortable on anything, you start to almost get to a place of complacency. And the idea is, is that you have to be curious and you've got to go for what you're looking for. You know, ask for what it is, right? Why, how do I get to point A to, you know, from point A to point Z, you know, and you got to ask often, you need to understand what are the criteria. You should ask many people across the company and say, Hey, we were working together on something. What do you think? Right? It's amazing what you'll find when you ask. And if you go at it in a kind way, right? It's amazing what you'll see. So that's why it's so critical to continue to have great relationships throughout the company and with your customers and your peers, right? Because you got to continue to do things that will make you insecure and a little scared, right? And I think that's when you start to really start to get out of that comfort zone, be comfortable with trying new things that's going to ultimately separate you from the pack and get you to that places of where you want to be.
And so I know that we're close to time, but the re way I would um, close this out today is really the next step of my journey is I've been so lucky to be um, to have mentors, um, to have somebody who's been a, a ride or, or die partner for me in, in terms of every part of the business for the last 15 years and to work with so many great folks along the way. And now I'm at the point in my career where I'm hopeful to just continue to pay it forward and to mentor and to help other people achieve their goals. And the thing is you have to start that always and often. And I really hope what you take away from this is, is that everything is achievable. Um, the only limit a lot of times for people is themselves. And so just continue to work hard at what you do and the success will follow. Thank you so much for the time today. Just a time, so really appreciate the, uh, the opportunity. Mm -hmm.